right, good evening, number 159, 159, please stand, and we'll sing on all four verses of number 159. Tell me the story of Jesus, right on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell me of Jesus, tell me again. Tell me of Jesus, tell me the story again. Tell how the where they nailed him, tell how he suffered my pain, tell of the grave where they laid him, tell how he lives once again, tell me if Jesus, tell me again, tell me if Jesus, tell me the story again, tell me the story so a sinner, pay the ransom for me, tell me of Jesus, tell me again, tell me of Jesus, tell me the story again. Amen. How's everybody doing today? up tonight. They're wound up tonight. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, excited to see what the Lord's going to do. Heard some great reports from Alaska and Preacher. And uh, he's enjoying the endless sun up there. I'm sure he'll be tired when he gets back, but he's enjoying that for sure. And I think right now in Alaska, they've had last few nights of the team meetings about 10 saved. So praise the Lord for that. And uh, he says, great church up there and uh, great attention for the teenagers. He'll preach it again tonight. And tomorrow night, I think. And uh, so you pray for him and excited about that. Glad you're here tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the evening. We thank you for your goodness. We ask that you'd be with us tonight, that we might hear from you, that you might be honored and you'd be pleased and you get glory from what's done here. Lord, thank you for what's already went on this week and thank you for preacher and the reports there. Uh, Lord, you give him strength. You give him power. Hey, and um, that he might preach strong and your spirit might work. We thank you for it in your son's name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. All right, y'all turn to number 350. I think uh, we'll just to mix things up a little bit, we'll sing two verses. Kenny, uh, you'll come and read the missions letter, and then we'll sing the second two verses and shake hands. How's that? Just to mix it up a little bit. All right, here we go. 350, the first two verses. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing? Power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? His power are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? blood of the Lamb. Are you walking daily by the Savior's Son? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucifix? Are you walking in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soaking blood of the Lamb? Are you Spotless are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Yeah. Alrighty.
already. If you have your missionary letter, go ahead and get that out. This missionary letter comes from Sylvia Wells, and it says, Dear Pastor Dignan and church family, the churches in Ecuador have permission from the government to open their services once again. We have received encouraging news from two of the pastors there, which we would like to share with you. Redivida Santo Domingo. They're, they're, they're having two services with 50% attendance. The economy of the church remains stable. They have baptized an average of three persons per month and have courses in discipleship training and how to disciple. Their home missionary, Carmen Navarro, opened two new, opened two new works for children in two new areas. She has an average of 40 children every Saturday and around 13 women for Bible study. Sorry, I thought I read that wrong. Their, prayers, their prayer requests are, God to call more men to the ministry, pastors for the churches without pastors, health of Pastor Patricio Solis, Pastor Jesus Carlos Sama in Cayambe, Ecuador. Rey de Vida, Portoveo. They do not have a pastor at this time, so Pastor Solis travels there every 15 days to have services. Pastor Marco Loza of the church in Santo Domingo helps in this also. The Santo Domingo Church is helping them fix some things on the property that need attention. This church has baptized one person so far this year. They have courses in discipleship training and how to disciple. They ask that we pray for a full-time pastor for their church. Bethel Buenafe. Their prayer requests are finances for new works, land for church in Quevedo, Quevedo laborers and finances for future churches in the Ventanas, continued vision for establishing more churches and finances for car. Saturday, July 10th, we celebrated 61 years of marriage. Who would have thought that the young couple standing before the preacher in Ivanhoe Baptist Church in Ivanhoe, North Carolina, would one day take the message of God's love and mercy to the regions far beyond that small community. We are beyond amazed at how God has allowed us to be his instrument in establishing churches in Ecuador. We could never have done this without the financial, with, without the financial and prayer support of our faithful churches here in the States. Saying thank you seems so inadequate, but it is very sincere. If I'm not mistaken, those folks were representing our church when Norm and I and the Georges were in our 20s when we came here. That's what faithfulness looks like, young people. We're not in our 20s anymore, and they've been married. They were in their, you know, 30s. It's so, a wow. They're in their maybe late 20s themselves. All right, number 350, let's stand together. We'll sing the third verse, shake them hands, and come back and finish. Here we go. When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bride? And be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the blood, in the blood of all the Lamb? Come in spotless or they want? I'll know what to do.
350, 350, verse number four, please. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul of me. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they dry? Yes, are you washed? Blood of the Lamb. All right, very good. Grab your Bibles if you would. And we'll read a verse. But before I do that, I have been reminded, and I just about forgot until I look back. Um, we didn't recognize, recognize visitors. If there is a visitor in the house tonight, and you have not received our visitor card from our most wonderful ushers in the whole entire world, just raise your hand. We'll not embarrass you, but we'd love to get your visitor card. Did we miss anybody? Anybody need a visitor card? Yeah. We'd love to get you gifted in the service. Okay. Thank you, men. I sure appreciate that. Uh, Acts. Did I tell you where to turn to? Okay, Acts chapter 5. Once again, Peter will be mentioned again tonight. <laughs> and uh, so... Unfortunately for me, but that's where the Lord has us. And, uh, and uh, anyway, Acts chapter 5, we'll read a good portion uh, throughout the message, but right now we'll just read, um, we'll read verse number 29, we'll read verse number 32, and we'll read verse 39, okay? So 29, 32. And 39. Then we'll pray. And we'll have our special. Then right after the special, the kids can be dismissed. All right? So, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostle, apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Verse 32. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. And in verse number 39. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. Lord, we sure do love you. We thank you for the evening. Lord, may you be magnified. Lord, would you give us power to hear and power to receive. May you help us tonight. We thank you for your word. Lord, you be with our preacher. Give him power as he'll preach just a little bit. With the time difference, God, help him. Help his family. May you save souls. May you encourage Christians. We thank you for it. We give you all the honor and praise tonight in your son's name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Two little boys were staring at the candy on display. One whispered to the other with a clerk looking away. Just put it in your pocket, no one will know. We'll eat it all before we get back home. That little boy just stared down at the candy on the shelf. You could almost hear the conversation he had with himself. Then he gave the clerk a dollar and took the candy and his change. Gave half to his buddy and explained. No matter who's watching, no matter who sees, Jesus in my heart knows how wrong that would be. When I'm home and mama asks me, have you been good? Though she would never know, I would. Well, little boys, they grow up and temptations grow up too. We're living in a world that says do what you want to do. 
What they don't know won't hurt them is the devil's battle cry. But a godly man knows that is just a lie. No, no matter, matter who's, who's watching, watching no, no matter who sees, Jesus and my heart knows how wrong that, that would be. When the Holy Spirit asks me, have you been good? Oh, the world would never know I would. The man that I am when no one is watching is the man I really am. No matter who's watching, no matter who sees, Jesus in my heart knows how wrong that would be. When the Holy Spirit asks me, have you been good? No, the world would never know. No, the world would not ever know. I would. Me and Jesus would. Oh, great job. Fantastic. Kids, you can be dismissed. That's fantastic. Excellent. Excellent. You no, know, there are just some songs that you just embody. I remember when I was, I don't know, I was young. We were at a dollar store, Dollar General. Remember back in the day when there was mirrors all around the tops? And you knew the manager was watching you from somewhere in those mirrors. I wanted a pack of Bubblicious watermelon gum. And my mom said no. So what did you do? I was a terrible boy. I backed up to the that candy, candy, uh, you know, platform, whatever the aisle there at the end, and I just slid that watermelon bubblicious into my back pocket, and went home and promptly ate all five within one minute of being home and threw it all away. <laughs> so I could not and even enjoy it. I was terrible, and uh, that was, my thieving days were over after that. All right, is thieving a word? Okay. Oh, good. Thieving. What was that? From Arkansas. From Arkansas. Okay, yeah. Thieving. I guess most people would say um, stealing. Whatever. Okay, thieving. We're just going to go with that. That's the only word that comes to my mind right now. Acts 5. So, at the beginning of uh, the chapter number 5, we looked several weeks ago about how Satan would love nothing better than to dis disrupt a church that is going forward for God. And he used some individuals there, Ananias and Sapphira. He used some individuals. And he was not uh, able to wreck the church in the midst of that. There was, some, there, was some, there was some trouble for sure. But we understand that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so Satan tried to... Dampen the message of God through some individuals, through some chaos. But he was unsuccessful. And so as it is in the history of the church, and you'll find this throughout the Bible, you'll find this throughout history, another conflict will come. There will be another conflict. And here in this same chapter, it hasn't been too much farther removed from the Ananias and Sapphira debacle. But now we are, and there are this time, the issue, the persecution comes from outside the church. We find that in verse number 18, they were, Peter was a, I do love Peter. He just wouldn't come before Elijah in my book. I'm sorry. But I, I, Peter was a great man. He was used of God. We find in verse number 15 that in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. I mean, Peter was being used of God. There's, that's without debate. He was used of God. 
The church was going forward and the religious sect, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees and the Sadducees of the Jews, they did not like it. They did not like it. They didn't like it when Jesus was doing it. They definitely don't like it now that the apostles are continuing it. In so much, even doing greater works. Isn't, didn't Jesus Christ say that? That when the Spirit has come, you'll even do greater works? And so the, the religious sect, the world, if you would, they did not like that. And it says in verse number 18, And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. The apostles were thrown into prison. This would not be the first time they were thrown into prison. This would not be the last time. They were continually thrown in and out of prison. We find that. But prison did not stop them. The apostles were facing, mounting, continuing more and more persecution. They were commanded not to preach or teach. So they were in jail and God said, all right, I'm going to let you out. So they went out and they immediately started to preach again. It says in verse number 28, saying, Did we not straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, intend to bring and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Speaking about Jesus Christ. Then Peter said, and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. And the apostles were courageous, and there in that midst of persecution, they were commanded not to preach or teach. But that did not stop them. They find, we find the statement that sometimes we use to justify our own means, but it says, we ought to obey God rather than men. And then Peter preached a mighty sermon after that. We find in verse 32, and we are his witnesses, speaking of the apostles, of these things, it's talking about how Jesus Christ was slew in a tree. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. Holy Ghost is witness. I, I, here, if we take a little side note just for a moment. It, it, it may tie in a little bit later. But Peter and the apostles were in prison. Now they're out of prison. And they immediately went to back to preaching. And they said, hey, listen, we, 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 I know you told us to stop. But we don't care. Because we'd rather obey God. It is going to be hard for a host of Christians to be obedient to God's plan and purpose when, in, when they are not being obedient in the easy time. We don't know as Americans what real persecution looks like yet. We don't know that. Now there are other believers outside of this world in the Middle East for sure and and across the, uh, um, the globe, in India, there's a great persecution happening even now. I mean, that's real persecution. People are putting their life on the line, preaching the name of Jesus Christ. We don't quite know what real persecution looks like. But I would figure at some point, if God continues to tarry, we will. And if we do not stand and be bold and obey and be obedient in the easy time, what makes us think we'll be obedient in the hard time? I think we're lying to ourselves. We can't do what God asks us to do now in the freedom of America. When are we, are we going to just automatically have courage from somewhere and do it in the midst of opposition? In the midst of persecution? In the midst of, okay, if you continue this, you're going to die. Hmm, we couldn't do it and be made fun of. I, I, I felt like fun that's going to be hard. And Peter said, it, we've, we've got to obey God. We've got to obey God. And then they, they're, they're in the midst of this trial again. I mean, I, I tell you, that, that, that Sanhedrin, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they, they love to bring people forth to trial and talk them to death, right? And so they're here, they're, they're trying to decide what they're going to do with these guys, and they understand that they, they're, they're not even afraid. In another part, in a few more chapters, said, man, they marvel at these men because they, they had been with Jesus. They were marvel at like, who these guys were. They were turning the world upside down for Christ. They were bold for the name of Jesus Christ. What are we going to do with these guys? We threw them in prison. We thought that would shut them up. But now they're preaching even more. What are we going to do with them? And so in verse 34. Then stood there up in one of the council a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, 
had in reputation among the people and commanded to be put the apostles for the little space. Now, this guy, he, he got attention. His word brought weight. He was a doctor of the law. You, you'll remember uh, Gamaliel as the teacher in which Saul, who we know as Paul, was brought up under. That was his teacher, this doctor of the law, this Pharisee, this great one. And he said, put the apostles back. Let me tell you what I think. And he talks about how he gives a few other these uh, illustrations about how, oh, this one guy, he came up and 400 joined him and they became nothing. Then after this, Judas, in verse 37, he was, he was preaching and drew many after him, but now they're all dispersed. He made one mistake, though. He lumped Jesus in with the rest of these men, and Jesus was God. But he does make one statement here. He says, now, and I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. It, that is true. That, that was the true statement. I and mean, he was smart enough to know, listen, if, if, this, if this is just of human nature, if this is just of the flesh, it's going to end at some point. But in verse 39, but it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. So Peter and the apostles has had persecution within the church, had to deal with that issue. Now they're having persecution without the church. And this doctor of the law stands up and says, hey, um, you remember this so-and-so, this, this group, they had a big following, but... It, they're all done. I remember this Judas of Galilee. Yeah, he, he, was, he drew a lot of people to himself too, but now they're all dispersed. We ought to let these guys just, just let them alone. Because if it's of their own selves, it's going to come to naught anyway. It's not going to be anything. But if it be of God, you're not going to overthrow it. And there in that moment... We are given a great promise by someone that I don't even believe was saved. For he stated the truth in this. But it be of God, forget it. It will continue on. Oh, it's going to continue on. You know, in that moment there, and those Peter and the apostles were there, and they're thinking, yeah, that's right, it's going to continue on. This is not of ourselves, for Peter knew who he was. He was the guy that would talk before he think. He was, the guy that, he was the guy that denied Jesus Christ, and yet he has been restored, and now the Holy Ghost has come upon him. Hey, listen, it's going to continue on. And this message, this church, if you would, it, it would continue on. Why? Because it is of God. We have to be assured that it will continue on. The message will continue. Be encouraged, for it will continue on. Think about this. We are stepping in the line of the disciples and proclaiming truth to the next generation. And what we have today is it, our church is not the building or it's the gym. Hey, it's the people that has gathered within here. Just as it was all these days ago when Peter and the apostles were bringing forth and proclaiming the goodness of God. Hey, listen, we are now stepping in line with Peter and those of the great behind us and saying, hey, we will take the truth and we will continue on. Why? Because it be of God, you will not overthrow it. Be encouraged. It will continue on. Be encouraged. It will continue on. Communism has not defeated it. Be encouraged. It will continue on for socialism has not defeated it. They have tried to stomp it out. They have tried to law it out. They have tried to make it legal. Hey, listen. It will continue on. If it be of God, you shall not overthrow it. Be of encouraged. It will continue on. Global warming will not stop it, right? Well, it feels hot today, sure. But listen, that's not going to stop it. Be encouraged, it will continue on. Woke culture will not stomp it out. Cancel culture will never cancel true Christianity. Be encouraged, it will continue on. Yeah, they're trying to get rid of this and they're trying to get rid of that. Hey, listen, if it be of God, you will not overthrow it. Be encouraged. Hey, listen, the message will continue. 
We all get scared and find ourselves in the corner biting our nails. Hey, listen, it didn't get stomped. It didn't get stopped. It didn't get gotten rid of. I don't think that's good English. But hey, listen, it didn't get gotten rid of. But then it's not going to get gotten rid of now. Did I just make that new English uh, quote up? Being getting gotten rid of. Nikki, is that correct English? Sometimes she helps me out in a mean way. She's like, that wasn't a word tonight. It just became one. Like upsetness on Sunday morning. That's a real word. Be encouraged it will continue on. Executive orders will not cancel our Christianity. We get scared. Oh, what's going to happen? Like God is up on his throne, wringing his hands, thinking, oh no, they're going to try to order it all the way. Hey, listen, it didn't happen with Peter. It is not going to happen now. Be encouraged, you'll continue on. If it be of God, ye shall not overthrow it. Hey, that is a promise. Hey, listen, if it be of God, the seeker-sensitive churches will not stop it. It will continue on. Be encouraged, it will continue on. It is not on you, for it is on God. It is God's message, it is God's work, and he will continue it. Be encouraged, it will continue on. No amount of persecution can stop it. You're a member of our forefathers, the Waldensians. They would go and they'd hide themselves just so they could have the scripture. It didn't stop it then. And they give their lives and they were burned to the stake through bloody merit. Hey, listen, it didn't stop then. We had early believers finding themselves uh, at, being martyred because they wanted to teach the Ten Commandments. Hey, listen, it didn't stop then. They killed uh, John Wycliffe, and it didn't stop then. They killed William Tyndale. It didn't stop then. Hey, listen, the word and the message and the church will continue on. No amount of persecution will break it. Be encouraged. It will continue on. Keep preaching the gospel. In the face of persecution, in the face of jail time, in the face of prison, in the face of some really smarty pants. What'd they do? They kept preaching. They kept giving the message. They didn't back down. No, those that have the Holy Spirit will find boldness to preach and to deliver the message of God. It's going to continue on. So how do we become a part of that? The message will continue, but sometimes the messenger falls out, don't they? We've all seen that. Someone who was in church and found themselves on fire and now all of a sudden they've bailed. And their life's a wreck. Let's look at here in just the scriptures just for a moment. We'll, we'll go to the house. The message will continue on. Number one, whose message are you preaching? Whose message are you preaching? Then Peter and the other, other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God Rather than men. Hey, in verse 28, they said, hey, listen, this, with your doctrine, you're, you're trying to bring this man's blood upon us. Hey, listen, that's not our doctrine. Hey, that's not our words. Hey, no, that's, that's God's word. Hey, we ought to obey God rather than men. Hey, we are going to preach his word to the fullest. Their message was with courage. They had made their choice. Hey, listen, we're going to obey God no matter what the consequences may be. Why? Because they understood the message and where the message came from. No man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Hey, at that moment, there in the midst of that persecution, the disciples and Peter made their choice. Hey, listen, we will forsake all else. We have chosen God and we have chosen his message and we will continue. Yes. The message, what, whose message are you preaching? We find not only their, their message was with courage, their message did not change to who they were when they were talking to different people. Their message was the same when it was talking to the Ethiopian eunuch by himself in the desert. It was the same when he was talking to the doctor of the law in the midst of the Sanhedrin. Hey, listen, their message did not change. Their message the same then as the same today. Their message was not their own the same with us. The Bible is our message. The gospel is our declaration. We hold to this. 
This is our message. In my house, we have three B words that we hold to. First B word is the most important. The rest of it doesn't matter too much, but it does because I'm the head of the household. First B, Bible. Listen, what do we do what we do? Listen, the Bible never fails. The Bible is perfect. The Bible is our guidebook. The Bible is our blueprint for our life. The Bible is how we can know God and how God can know us. Hey, the Bible has every answer for life. So we go to the Bible. And that message never changes. We had two other B's and they're the little side notes. They're like uh, lowercase B's. That's a big B, lowercase B's. Second B, these are equal. Baptist. Sometimes I'll tell you, why we do that? Because we're Baptist, dude. That's why we have so many fellowships. That's why. Why are all our fellowships around food? We Baptist. Okay. There's no other way around that. We like to eat. Say, so is there any other way? I'm a Baptist. I, have no, I don't know any other way. No, I don't think so. When you get together, what do you do? You eat. Okay. Second B. No. Third B. Bussy. Sometimes we do things. Why are we doing that? We're a bussy. I'm sorry. You're probably not ever going to get away from that. But listen, the message was not their own. And when the message is not your own, the message is from another, and we find that the message that they had was from God. We ought to obey God rather than man. Yeah, okay, so we're going to stick to this message. We're going to have courage in this message. We're not going to have any compromise in this message. Whose message are you preaching? Are you preaching a fleshly, fleshly message? Are you preaching a Bible message? Number two, whose power are you preaching that message? We find in verse 32, and we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. Hey, listen, not only are we preaching God's message, we are preaching God's message in his power. And when they had prayed in Acts 4, 31, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. You want to know how to proclaim the message correctly? Through the power of God. It is not my message. It is God's message. And so it's God's message. I'm going to let him have the full work. I'm going to ask the Spirit to do his full work with God's message. Then whose message are you preaching? Whose power are you preaching that message? We find in number three, God will continue his message. We find in Matthew 5.18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. God's message will continue. We need not to fear. Hey, listen, his message will continue. They get afraid. Oh, what's going to happen to America? Hey, listen, this is what I know. Whatever happens to America, the message will continue. Whatever happens to this world, the message will continue. Hey, listen, God will decide when it's all done, he'll come and get us all back and wrap the church up. Hey, listen, the message will continue. God will continue that. It's not on me. I'm obedient to his word and obedient to his spirit, and God will continue the message. We find, fourthly, God's message will bring persecution. That's right. That's not very much fun, is it? Verse number 40. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles, they beaten them. They beaten them and beaten them. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, discouraged, Upset, depressed, pouting, whining, negative Nancy ing. That's what we do. We're not careful. The apostles just got beat. I don't know what their beating was, but I'm sure it wasn't very much fun. They were just got out of prison and they went before the, the Sanhedrin. Then they beat them, and then they let them go, and this is what the apostles did. They rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. To the apostles, persecution was not depressing. To the apostles, getting beat for the name of Christ did not discourage them. 
to the apostles when they were declaring the message of God and through the power of God. When that message brought persecution, you know what they did? They rejoiced that they were called, they were worthy, they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Wow. What boldness there was in the early church. What strength in who God is and who God was to them in the early church. What strength they had in the message. They did not waver after they, have gotten, after they got beat. They did not waver after they were in jail. No, they were, they, just, they, were, they were rejoicing. Why? We were able to suffer shame for our God. It will continue on. Maybe we'll have to endure some persecution. So I ask you the question now, are you obedient now when it's easy? If you're not obedient to God's word and to God's spirit now, you cannot expect when prison time comes or major persecution comes or beatings or threatenings or whatever comes, you can't you can expect to be obedient when you're not being obedient now. It's like your child looking at you and they can't obey anything at home. And they would say, hey, listen, will you let me go out to a party? No, stupid. I'm not going to do that. Why? I expect you to obey and to do what's right. You can't even do that at home. We've kid ourselves. We've deceived ourselves. Oh, when the time comes, I'll be ready. Hey, listen, how about now? Let's be ready now. Let's be rapture ready now. Hey, let's be ready for persecution now. Hey, let's find out what our message is. And our message is not of ourselves. No, it's of God. And our message is as of His Word. And His message is delivered through His power. And we understand that God will continue the message. And if persecution should knock on our door, if we should be so chosen to be a martyr for Christ that we would stand firm and count it rejoicing that we would suffer shame for His name. And knowing this, the message will still continue. The message will continue. And so I want to be the one that would step in line. Look way back there. See Peter. I see Paul. Paul's number three, Peter, sorry. I see Timothy. Well, I think that's Timmy's mom and grandma behind him. I see, I see Timmy's... Uh, Grandkids. I see the Walt Disney's. I see John Wycliffe. I see George Mueller. Why? The message will continue. It's not my message. No, no, no. This is God's message. And so I'll take it. And I will love it. So when if communism comes to our land. I'll be a God. I'll be a God rather than man. Well, culture comes and says, hey, you can't say that. Hey, listen, this is what the Bible says. I'm not ugly. I'm not hateful. But we're not changing. I'm not turning around. I'm not going to be bullied because you're offended. Because your lifestyle stinks. I'm not going to be offended. No, why? The message will continue on because it is not my message. In the three B's of my life, Bible, Baptist, and Bussy. There's only one of those that well, will continue on forever. That's the Bible. Whose power are you preaching the message? Maybe we can say it this way. Whose power are you living the message? And God will continue it. The world cannot hate you, but it hateth. But me it hateth, because I testified it. That the works that rub are either evil. The message that we bring, people will not like. Why? Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And so what do we do? We hold to the message and say, God, thank you that you allowed me to suffer persecution, that you'd count me worthy, worthy to suffer shame for your name. But be encouraged, it will. It will. Continue on. Heavenly Father, we sure do need you tonight. I ask you to help us in this time.
Hello, Pastor Randy Dingman here from Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm going to take a moment and express to you what our main vision and purpose is of this ministry. You see, much of this world today has a question. It's a question that was asked in John chapter 3 by one person. It's a question that is asked by the masses, but when you really think about it, it's really a question we all have to come to grips with, face to face with, one on one in our lives, sometime in our life. The question is this, where will I spend eternity? And that question was asked by a religious leader by the name of Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He approached Jesus Christ in the middle of the night and had a question about spiritual matters. Well, good thing for Nicodemus, he came to the right person at the right time because Jesus Christ is the answer in spiritual matters. You see, many of us have questions about that, and man has tried in many of its efforts to answer that question with their own ideas and philosophies. We've tried to come up with ideas on how to get us to heaven, how to confirm our way to heaven. But the fact is we got to find out what God says about eternal things. And that's why asking Jesus Christ that question is so vital because when you ask Jesus a question, you get the answer. And as the question was asked, Jesus answered simply this, you must be born again. In John chapter three, that's what he said to Nicodemus. And that's the same thing he says to you and to me, even today. You see, God is God of this universe, but he's not everybody's father. What does that have to do with John chapter 3? Well, think about this. We all have birthdays. We are physically born under this physical planet. Or else you wouldn't be able to watch me or I wouldn't be able to sign to you right now or talk to you at this time. But God, being a spiritual being, knew that though our bodies are temporal, our spiritual part of us, our spiritual anatomy of us, is an eternal thing. And so God says, I'm more concerned about the spiritual issues. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and me 2,000 years ago and live again three days later so that you and I can have a spiritual birthday and know for sure that heaven is our home. Well, that leads to the next question. Why do we need a spiritual birthday? Well, it's simple. We're all sinners. We've all broken God's law and God's commands. But God loves us so much so that he let Jesus Christ become the substitute for your sin and my sin. So that if we recognize and admit that we are sinners, we can then trust in Jesus Christ as our substitute. And more so than that, our personal savior and know that on top of our physical birthdays, we have a spiritual birthday now in that God becomes our father, we become his sons, daughters, we become his children, and we know we're going to go to heaven someday. My friend, it's very simple. It's not about what the church says or what I have ideas about or what you have ideas about. It's finding out what God says directly to you and me. And he did it right there in the Bible, and in particular, John chapter 3, when Jesus says, you must be born again. If our church can help you with that question, if you have any questions about that, we can give you some answers. We'd be glad to help you in any way we can. Again, Pastor Randy, personally thanking you for watching the message. And again, if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. God bless and make it a great day.